and welcome to Sunday School here at Advent Lutheran Church. We are so glad you are joining us on this Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the beginning of what is known as Holy Week here in the church. It is the last week of the season of Lent and is a time that we remember not only the joy of Jesus' life, but also the sadness of Jesus' life too. Because Jesus is Jesus and the experience of faith is more than just one emotion, is more than just hope. It is truly all the emotions we feel around the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, Today, we are going to be reading the story of Palm Sunday, but at the end of this video, you will also find the story of Jesus' death. Because it is good for us to remember as we get ready to celebrate Easter, that before the resurrection, before Jesus came back to life, we have to celebrate and remember the sadness that also comes with death because it is just a part of who we are. And it is good for us to remember that it's okay to be sad, it is okay to hurt. Because even for those disciples, before they knew of Jesus' new birth, new in, in his resurrection, they too had a moment of sadness. A moment that probably sticks with them even after Jesus was brought back to life. But with all of that said, I want you to know a little bit more about Holy Week and what all of that means and how it's connected to our worship services that we celebrate each and every Sunday in our sanctuary. So let's send it over to Candle Clone to hear a little more. Thanks, Brian, and welcome everyone back to the sanctuary. Today and this week is a huge time within the seasons of the church and the church year. This week is what we know as Holy Week. It is a week where we will celebrate four different festivals that all lead up to the big celebration of Easter. And yet, the crazy thing about this festival time and this week that we, are, that we are in is it mirrors so much of what we do in our own weekly worship lives here at the church. It starts today on Palm Sunday, the day when Jesus, as the Bible says, triumphantly comes into the city of Jerusalem riding humbly on a donkey as people, disciples, and those in the city place palms at the feet of Jesus to welcome him into the city like a king that was coming into his kingdom. And we too in our celebration will wave palms as we march from the fellowship hall into our sanctuary saying the words, Hosanna which is a cry out to God, it is a cry to God to deliver us from evil. And just like in our worship service, where we start our worship service with, with what we call a Kyrie, or a cry to God. It's truly a Hosanna chorus that we call to God saying, God, we have misstepped. We have done things that we feel could have been better. Maybe we accidentally yelled at our teacher, or maybe perhaps we told our parents we brushed our teeth on Tuesday when really we didn't, and we are sorry for these things, knowing that we can do better. And as we go through this week, as we end our worship on Palm Sunday, taking our palms with us, remembering Jesus' is life and life going into the season of Pentecost, or not Pentecost, sorry, as Jesus goes in to celebrate the Passover, we too remember his time at the Passover meal with the celebration of Maundy Thursday. 
Now, not to make dad jokes of it being the beginning of the week at the end of the week, saying it's Monday, Thursday. Maundy Thursday celebrates the Last Supper. It celebrates Jesus' last time eating with his friends and with his disciples, where he shares the meal of communion. He shares the bread, saying that this is my body broken for you. He shares the cup of wine or juice, saying this is my blood shed for you, foreshadowing to Jesus' death on the cross. We also remember Maundy Thursday in the way that we sometimes will wash hands or feet, just as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, showing that even the highest of people, Jesus, God's Son, is a servant to all, just as we are servants to all. And we see these same motions in our worship service as we take Holy Communion, remembering Jesus' death on the cross, but also the meal that he, was, that he gave us all to share in community. We remember our service by the prayers of the people as we pray for those who may be in this space or even out in the world, knowing that we go out to serve and love and show God's grace to every person we meet. On Good Friday, we remember the death of Jesus on the cross. We remember Jesus dying in this human way because Jesus is human. Because Jesus died to save us from this, our sins, the things that we do wrong, and reminds us that we can do better. That leads into what some people call the Easter Vigil or Easter Saturday, the day that Jesus lays in the tomb, the day that we say in our own, in our own prayers that Jesus goes and, vanished and vanquishes hell and says, this is no more all of you are loved and saved by grace. And then we end that time going into next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, where we share in the Alleluia's and in this rejoicing that Jesus is with us always. Just as we end our worship services Remembering that God goes with us, whether it is by the flame that we watch leave this space or whether it is in those words that God is with us in the benediction that the pastor says each Sunday. This week is a celebration not only of worship and God's love for us, but is also a reminder that both joy and sadness is goes throughout Jesus' life to his death and resurrection. And it is good for us to know that we too can feel these emotions always because Jesus shows these emotions always. And so, we hope that you look at this Holy Week, read these stories that make the Holy Week, what it is, understanding each of these different days and Jesus' death and resurrection. Because it is both the death and resurrection that are needed for us to be saved by grace. But that's all I have for you here. I hope you enjoy your Palm Sunday. Enjoy folding your palms into crosses. I know Arts and Crafts Clone has that for you. And we'll see you next time. Bryant, it's back to you. Thanks, Candle Clone. Now, today's stories will come from the Gospel of Luke. You can truly find most of Jesus' Palm Sunday, Last Supper, and Death and Resurrection stories in all four Gospels. But this week, we are looking at the story from Luke beginning in chapter 19 with the 28th verse. I'll list 
all of the verses down here below that we are looking at today, but know that I really hope you take a time with your family to read through the entire story of this week. From Jesus parading into the city of Jerusalem, to the Last Supper, to the judging of Jesus, to his death on the cross, until they seal the tomb. And then next Sunday, we can celebrate the joy that comes in Jesus' rebirth and resurrection. Now, like I said, today's story comes from Luke chapter 19, beginning with the 28th verse. We are right now just going to hear the story of Palm Sunday and talk about that. But I hope you stick around after our video today and hear the story of Jesus' death on the cross. With that, here is the story of Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Friends, Jesus said to his disciples, I need to go to Jerusalem. I've got some super important things to do, and I want to celebrate Passover with you there. Will you come with me? Sure, said the disciples. Passover is a great holiday, such good food, and what a wonderful story Passover celebrates. The exodus of God's people, the Israelites from Egypt. It's good to be with friends and family at Passover. So Jesus and his friends started to go to Jerusalem. When they got close to the city, Jesus said, I'd like two of you to go borrow a donkey in the next village. Please tell the owner I need it. He will understand. When the two friends came back with a donkey, Jesus climbed on its back and rode down the hill into the city of Jerusalem. The disciples followed behind. Suddenly, they found themselves in a parade. People were singing and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Here comes God's King. Hosanna! Praise God. People all over heard shouting and singing, and they joined the parade too. Hundreds of people, thousands of people. They started taking off their coats and laying them on the ground for Jesus and the donkey to walk on. They pulled palm branches down from the trees and waved them as they sang, then they threw their palms on the ground to make a path for Jesus. The crowds gave Jesus a royal welcome as he rode into the city, just like a king. But Jesus was a very different king. He was a king of peace. Not everyone understood that. Jesus was not at all what they were expecting. They thought the crowd was too loud and the parade was getting too big. Who is that man? Someone asked. What's going on there? Asked another. The crowd answered, This is Jesus, God's King. He has come to save us. Some of the religious leaders murmured, Hush, Jesus, tell your friends to be quiet. It's way too loud out there. But Jesus said, We can try to make these people be quiet, but that wouldn't make a difference because today the whole earth is celebrating. Whenever I read the story on Palm Sunday of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, and I think about all that is going on in this story, I begin to wonder. I wonder what Jesus' disciples were feeling as they entered the city, or even as they prepared to enter the city. I wonder how those disciples felt when Jesus sent them to go and get this donkey and just tell the man, God requires it. The Lord requires it. I wonder how they all felt as they sat around the table 
to share that last meal with Jesus, not truly knowing it was his last. I wonder how they all felt when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus was tried by the people and, and put to death. I'm sure some of them were scared. Some of them were sad because this leader, this person they saw as a king was put to death. And that means that there were people that probably wanted to see the disciples also taken care of and not, and not be seen again. And yet, in this moment on Palm Sunday, they are rejoicing, believing that they are with this wonderful teacher who has taught them how to show God's love in new and radical ways. And yet, what they don't realize yet is how Jesus is going to continue through his death and resurrection, through washing their feet on Maundy Thursday, to being amongst them once Jesus is resurrected on Sunday, how he will continue to turn their lives upside down, showing them that God's love surrounds us always. And God's love cannot be put to death. God's love continues to be with us all the way through our lives. And it is something that even in our saddest moments, we celebrate that God's love still surrounds us, that God's love was shown to us through others who have gone on to heaven, that God's love is continued to be shown to us even in our hardest times in life. It is truly a joy that we know that God's love Jesus' love that he shows his disciples through this week and all of God's people through this week truly goes to us even today. It is truly a beautiful thing. And that's why it's good for us to remember all of the emotions that come with Holy Week. From joy to sadness to grief joy again next Sunday. Now, we are going to send it over to Arts and Crafts Clone, who's going to show us our activity pages and coloring pages you can find on our website, and also learn how you can take your palms and turn them into crosses. Arts and Crafts Clone, it's over to you. Thanks, Bryant, and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Arts and Crafts Corner here with Arts and Crafts Clone on this Holy Week. Now, as always, we have our activity and coloring pages for you. Plus, just before we finish, we will show you how you can use your palm to fold it into a cross if you come to worship this Sunday. So, here are the activity and coloring pages. First, the coloring pages for you. It starts off with this one of Jesus and his disciples getting ready to walk to the city of Egypt just before Jesus gets on his donkey. Next, as we move through Holy Week, is Jesus carrying his cross before he falls and can bear the weight no more. And third, we have Mary and the disciples and the other women who were with Jesus crying at the foot of the cross as Jesus passes away and dies before they move on to Easter. The sad, one of the saddest moments within Jesus' story. Next, you will find three different activity pages also on our website or in the narthex as you're walking in for worship. First is this fun, whoop, this fun maze that you can do that shows you, that shows you the way of Jesus parading 
through Jerusalem. Next, this is called close up comfort. What you're going to do is you are going to try and find the letters and extreme close up and then put an X through that letter in the alphabet. Look close at each circle. When you're done, you will find that there are three letters left. Use those three letters to write a word to finish this sentence down below. I swear the instructions make it seem easier. And finally, we have this word search that looks at different B words that deal with Holy Week. You'll probably find a lot of these B words in your Bible as you read through the different stories that make up the week of Passover for Jesus leading to his death on the cross. As always, you will also find our family discussion page on our website where you can look more in depth not only into the story of Palm Sunday, but into all the stories of what is known as the Passion as we lead to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, we're going to quickly turn it over so you can see how to fold your palm into one cross or many crosses. Um, and then once that is done, we're going to send it back to Bryant. Now, if you do have your palms at home and you would like to make these palm crosses, it is fairly simple, but even I, Arts and Crafts Clone, have a difficult time with it. Now, most palms are about this thick, as you can see here. You can choose to try and fold it using the full thickness of the palm, or what you can do is actually bend it in half and split it so that you get a skinnier shaft of a palm and it makes it a little easier for bending and folding. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go up just a little bit of the ways and then you're going to bend down the palm so that you have the top of your cross, okay? And then what you're going to do is kind of bend it once again at an angle Kind of at a 45 degree angle, 90 degree angle there, 45 degrees. Um, and that'll end, go out as one of the arms of the cross. You'll then once again bend it so that it comes across, so that it comes all the way out to be the other arm of the cross. Bend it one more time. And then once you're kind of back here in the middle, you'll pinch it. And you'll take the rest of this and use it to wrap around the middle here so that you can keep your cross together and kind of tuck it back in so the cross stays there. Now some people will actually take these crosses and hang them around their house just as a reminder of the death and resurrection of Jesus and that through that death and resurrection we can truly say Hosanna in the highest, for God has shown us God's love and grace through the death of his son and the resurrection of his son from the grave. And just like that, you have a little palm cross. Thank you, Arts and Crafts Clone. I truly hope you all take a moment to enjoy those activity and coloring pages, and I hope you also Find those palms if you come into worship and take a moment to fold those crosses. Leave them around your house to be a reminder of Jesus' death and resurrection and the new life we are given through Jesus forgiving us of all of our sins, of all the things that we do wrong. It is truly a joyous thing. Now, I hope that you have enjoyed our Sunday School lesson this week. I hope you have a wonderful Holy Week and truly take a moment each day to remember the love that is being shown through Jesus' story. And I hope you will join us next Sunday here in our Sunday School videos or maybe in between services at 9.30 for our Easter egg hunt and truly have a time to be together to celebrate Jesus' resurrection 
and remember that God loves us and that each and every single one of us is called, claimed, and named beloved child of God. Will you pray with me? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear God, your love is crazy. We know that there are many emotions we feel through your life, death, and resurrection. Help us as we're happy. Love us when we're sad. And celebrate with us in every moment. In your name we pray. Amen. Enjoy your week. We'll see you next Sunday, Easter Sunday. The day Jesus died. It was a very sad day when Jesus died. The soldiers who had arrested Jesus teased him for pretending to be a king. They took his clothes and put a king's purple cloak on him. They made a crown out of vines with sharp thorns and put it on Jesus's head. Ouch. The soldiers made Jesus carry a heavy wooden cross. The cross was too heavy for him. Jesus fell and skinned his knees and the cross tumbled to the ground. A man in the crowd carried the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. They raised Jesus' cross up on a hill between two other men. The other men were thieves, and they were being crucified too. One of the men was angry with Jesus. If you are a powerful king, can't you save yourself? Why don't you save us too? The man spat at Jesus. But the other thief believed in Jesus. He shouted back, Don't you know who this is? This is God's son. He hasn't done anything wrong. We are being punished for our mistakes. But Jesus shouldn't be here. The man turned to Jesus and asked, Will you take me to heaven with you? Jesus looked at the man and loved him. Jesus told him, Yes, today we will be in heaven together. After a while, the world grew very dark, as if a terrible thunderstorm was coming. It was as if all of creation was crying because Jesus was about to die. Jesus was feeling all alone and prayed to see if God was still there. Of course, God never left Jesus. God was with him the whole time. Jesus looked at the crowd. He was so sad that the people didn't believe that he was God's son. He asked God to forgive them for killing him. The soldiers offered him some sour wine, but he did not want to drink it. He was ready to die. Finally, Jesus had fought for long enough. He said, God, the work you gave me to do here is finished. He breathed a final, long, slow breath, and then he died.